marked the end of World War II. The atomic bombings of those two cities cast a dark shadow over the future of civilization and the human species. In the past 65 years, we have experienced a truly mad nuclear arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union based on the principle of mutually assured destruction. We have ascribed godlike qualities, godlike characteristics of power and protection to bombs that have no purpose other than the threat of massive annihilation and the carrying out of that threat. At its peak in 1986, there were some 70,000 nuclear weapons in the world. That number has come down, but there are still over 20,000 nuclear weapons remaining in our world. I want to share with you a short poem that I wrote about one of the survivors of Hiroshima. And this is, tells a little bit about the story of Shoji Sawada on that day 65 years ago when he was a young boy in Hiroshima. And the poem is called, Forgive Me, Mother. After the bomb, the young boy awakened beneath the rubble of his womb. He could hear his mother's cries, still trapped within the fallen house. He struggled to free her, but he lacked the strength. A fire raged toward them. Many people hurried past. Frightened and dazed, they would not stop to help him free his mother. He could hear her voice from the rubble. The voice was soft, but firm. You must run and save yourself, she told him. You must go. Forgive me, he said, bowing. Forgive me, mother. He did it as his mother wished. That was long ago, in 1945. The boy has long since been a man, a good man, yet he still runs from those flames. So we thank you for being here. We thank you for caring. And we thank you for joining us in this very critical work of trying to achieve a world without nuclear threat and without nuclear weapons. Thank you. Thirst. Kuwait Poetry Workshop it begins with a quote from Thich Nhat Hanh, Humans are not our enemies. Out of the silence of writing, she flies to the front of the lecture hall. I want to thank you all for coming this evening to remember the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Your presence here sends a message to the survivors of those bombings, the Hibakusha, and to the whole world that nuclear weapons must be abolished without delay. The story that we remember here today is about Sadako, who was two years old when the U.S. dropped the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. My daughter Lulu will turn one on Monday. In the past year, Sadako's story has taken on a powerful new meaning to me when I ask myself, what if Sadako was my daughter? When future generations look back at the people who lived in the year 2010, will we be condemned for our complacency in the face of obvious danger? Or will we be praised for our foresight and our courage in eliminating these instruments of mass annihilation. I know what side I want to be on. And that is why, even when I feel like very few people in seats of power are listening, I just have to remember how hard many people worked to end slavery or to end apartheid. And I keep going. Some of you here today, I know, have worked hard for many years 
for the elimination of nuclear weapons. Others may have just begun thinking about the issue. Regardless of your history, I hope that each one of you will continue to work with us at the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation for the abolition of all nuclear weapons so that we can pass on a world to future generations that we can be proud of. Veterans, we take off our shoes Japanese style. I'm glad I changed my socks. Tsunami-san, your name like a tidal wave crashes over me. In Hokkaido, I... Is entitled I'm A Song for Peace Day. <clears throat> when I think of Sadako holding cranes to heal her bomb-caused sickness and their friends... One thousand cranes carry these prayers for peace and all the wounded water your wings and what we are doing here is not so rare. Being together in community, sheltered by these trees, enjoying bird song and human song and poetry and offering our hopes for a peaceful world. This is the kind of world people want. The people want peace.